This is an excerpt from a novel in progress. The title of the novel is The Descent of Aphrodite. As to his own living situation, Eddie was conflicted. He was subletting a small room, literally a walk-in closet off another bedroom in a big flat in the Western Edition. The rightful tenant had gone biking in England and Holland for a couple of months. In a matter of weeks, Eddie would need another place to live. Though his room was tiny, he slept on a single mattress because the double wouldn't fit. Eddie liked the place well enough. His roommates were friendly, bike messengers and restaurant workers who lived double lives as musicians and artists. They dressed like the bastard children of Rod Stewart and Sid Vicious. Black clothes, ragged and dangly here, tight as leggings there. They dyed their hair blue-black like gunmetal and draped themselves in leather coats, too baggy and bedazzled, even for goodwill. The flat was dark and heavily curtained and smelled like old spray paint, but Eddie admired the Victorian details. The elegant woodwork around the fireplace, the intricate wainscoting and high ceilings with gingerbread crown molding. You could open the door for guests by yanking an Art Nouveau metal lever at the top of the stairs. The current furnishings were less vintage. In fact, most of them had been rescued from dumpsters or repaired in frantic marathon project sessions that usually took place late at night and accompanied by the wine of power tools. Indeed, the whole living room was more workshop than den and often crowded with failed projects. Eddie admired his, work, his roommate's dedication to their craft, even if he could not understand why someone would want to convert a busted dollhouse into a home for a pet rat, or spray paint a fake Christmas tree black, or insert a small television into a fish tank. The reverse has been done to death, the artist explained. <laughs> Eddie wondered if there was not some sophisticated subtext for which his conventional East Coast education had left him unprepared and incapable of grasping. Max, Eddie's old buddy from college, got it right away. Jesus Christ, Eddie, you're living with a bunch of speed freaks. <laughs> and then there was Gwen. Eddie hadn't told Max about Gwen, his roommate Mark's wife, because he never thought of himself as the kind of guy who'd mess around with a married woman, even if that married woman was only 21 and sexy in a Rosanna Arquette kind of way. A petite cutie with, a, with henna red bo hair, bob short, and a slender neck, Gwen was relentlessly cheerful and always wore a black leotard dress. She was a little skinny, but she laughed at everything Eddie said, even when he wasn't trying to be funny. Eddie felt witty, and with that feeling came a desire to make her laugh as much as possible, to give his newfound charm a chance to run wild. Eddie and Gwen usually hung out in the kitchen after Mark and Adam, another roommate, had locked themselves in Mark's room so they could compose on their Casios undisturbed. Gwen had long since staked out the kitchen as her territory. As a result, it was the only room in the whole flat that looked like it, what it was supposed to be. Eddie's bedroom might have been the closet, the living room might have been a workshop, but goddammit, the kitchen was a kitchen. Whenever Eddie so much as walked by, Gwen would waylay him, sit him down at the, sit him down at the dinette and pour him a big cup of coffee. And of course, she'd sit down too and start chatting away like a housewife from the 50s. How do you like San Francisco so far? Oh man, I, I love it. It's kind of overwhelming, but I know. I grew up in Petaluma, so yes, I know what you mean. But it's so much fun, don't you think? The city, I mean? It's so much fun. Have you been to Petaluma yet? No, of course not. You just got here. But you should go sometimes. It's a typical small town, you know? Nice place to be from, right? Eddie shrugged. So Mark told me you're working for Save the Dolphins? Yes, but that's just until I get things figured out. I, I don't know what comes next. I mean, I'm just subletting here. Are you an environmentalist? I think that's so important, you know? It's so cool. Well, well, I'm a writer, actually, but that doesn't really pay. I work in the marketing department at Levi's. You know Levi's Plaza on the battery? Any market there? Eddie had no idea. Kind of. Downtown, right? Gwen set down her mug and laughed until she had to come up for air. Oh, you should be a comedian. Downtown. And then she was laughing again. Eddie started laughing, too. A couple weeks after Eddie moved in, he was taking an afternoon nap, still on the men from the hangover, when he heard his door open and shut. He blinked in the half-light at her silhouette. Gwen? Shh. She shucked off her leotard dress and slipped into Eddie's bed. Her skin felt cool as she snuggled up to him. Uh, Gwen? No talking, she said, and mounted him. He slipped in without guidance. Eddie had never been with a girl so eager for him. Wet wasn't the word. Drenched, sobbing. He'd never gotten a girl into bed, in fact, 
without first exerting great effort, taking them out for dinner, drinks, making phone calls, dropping by their work. Yet here was this beautiful girl with zero courtship, grinding against him, chopping on his neck, fucking his mouth with her tongue. And when he came, before he could feel bad about coming first, before he knew what was happening, she slipped down and sucked him back to hardness in mere seconds. No one had ever done that before. He liked it. Then she was on him again, facing his feet this time, her tight buttocks, press, buttocks pressing and rolling against his belly, another first. A little awkward, took a little getting used to him, but he liked that he could caress her ass cheeks with such ease. Stick your thumb in my ass! Huh? Eddie wasn't sure he'd heard that right. Stick your thumb in my ass! Um, do it! <laughs> Eddie traced his thumb down a wet crack and zeroed in on his pucker target. He let out a breath and pressed his thumb inward. Half a knuckle. Come on already! A whole knuckle. That's it! More! A knuckle and a half. Her thrusts slowed and deepened. Her torso trembled with tectonic depth. Eddie shifted his pelvis back and the tremors intensified. One final shudder and she fell backward onto him, popping out his thumb. They rolled sideways into a loose spoon. Her mouth reached back to him, her tongue seeking out his. Aftershocks cycled through her, each one weaker than the one before until she was still. Eddie wrapped himself around her, feeling like the best lover in the world. <laughs> when he awoke, it was evening dark and she was gone. He pulled on his clothes and looked for people. For once, the flat was empty. Then Eddie remembered some big show down at the kennel club on Divisadero. He wandered the rooms and hallways, the high ceilings making him feel small. He turned on every light he could. The radiator shuddered and came on in the cooling night. In the kitchen, he checked the coffee pot. It was half full, but cold a long time. He poured himself a cup nonetheless and sat at the dinette, wishing Gwen were there. Thank you.